Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. And today, um, most of you know I'm located in Florida, but I do have, you know, some friends over in the California area. So today we have someone from the city of Banning to tell us how to do business with the city of Banning um, in California. So endless business opportunities is their is their motto. And we have Nicole Jews here with us today. Thank you so much for joining us, Nicole. Um, this has been, what, a long season so far. The season has been, <laughs> it's been a long season, but I'm so excited to get this information out to the community and just learn a little bit more about you. So, Nicole, would you mind telling us about yourself? Sure. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Nicole Jews, the purchasing manager for the city of Fanning. I um, am in are in the beautiful bright city that now I wanna say we're at 97 degrees in the morning at 10.30 of, um, <laughs> of Banning. Um, so I'm actually from um, California. I've been in California all my life. I actually started in the purchasing field back in, oh my goodness, probably 2004 as a clerical aide, part-time, had no clue what I was getting myself into and um, went into the nonprofit sector for a little while for the accounting as an accounting assistant, and then decided, you know what, I'm gonna try something more on the government side and went to the San Bernardino airport and worked my way to a purchasing supervisor, which then led me to want to get more into the purchasing field and learn more about contracts and negotiating and working with suppliers and their needs. And I ended up at, um, the Southern California Toll Roads, which is TCA, and then went to Omnitrans and decided I'm going to try to go for the top and see if I can make my way and, and get in as a manager and see what I can do to help um, within the purchasing field. And I ended up here and I'm here in the, the city of Banning as their, uh, as their purchasing manager for the last seven months. Wow. So that's a really a, like amazing story, thinking that you started as a clerical aide and now you know, you've worked your way all the way up to a purchasing manager. Like, first of all, congratulations on that. Like, that is amazing. Um, and I, I, I will say, once you got into that purchasing role or that purchasing field, what was it that kept you in that space? Like, what made you want to continue your education in the purchasing space uh, rather than, you know, trying to take up another role or position within these organizations that you were with? I think the, the ability, you know, people don't realize purchasing has a bad rap. People always think that we're trying to hold the purse closed and, <laughs> you know, let people spend money and really? it's like, no, nah, they, they don't want new people to do business. And I think I just, I, I felt like because it was so stigmatized, I wanted to be the, I wanted to be the person to help let people know you can do business with us. And even internally, there's that within our other departments that feel like we're a stopgap. We don't want them to use businesses that they want to do business with. We always want to um, make it harder for people to do business. We have too many regulations. But for us, we are, you know, we're the, we have fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we're spending taxpayer money in the best and legal way. So, I mean, and, and for me, the other part, the honest part was, I get to shop. I get yes. To shop. <laughs> <laughs> Which then translates to my personal life because I end up, you know, the kid, my kids, I have a 24-year-old daughter, Natalie, wow. and a 22-year-old son, Austin. And they always say, mom, you find good deals. We can go here and, and we don't have to spend like everybody else. And all my friends would say, why are you, you guys always go places. And for me, it's always like, how can I get the biggest bang for my buck? And I'm always... I don't do coupon, you know, how they have extreme couponing. I don't do any of that, but it's just <laughs> kind of, you know, talking to people and finding out how can I cut, cut this down just a little bit. And I think it's for me, the, the ability to figure out how can I negotiate? How can I you know, broaden people's horizon when it comes to areas where they feel like I can't get in? I can't do that. Yes, you can. Let me help you. Let me figure out how you, I can help you, you know, get to the goal that you're, you're trying to reach. So I think that that's, that's probably how I got here. <laughs> I can see that. I, and I like the, the segue you made into contrasting between personal and professional life, because I am a avid shopper, which I'm working on that. <laughs> um, but you know, this is not my therapy session right now. So we're going to keep it moving right along. Um, 
So the next part is as a purchasing manager, what is your role as a pur purchasing manager? Like we see the term, we hear the term, but really what is your role as the purchasing manager? My role here with the city is to, I have a staff of two. I have a purchasing assistant and a buyer and I oversee their daily tasks and uh, making sure that we're staying within the policies that guide us and our ordinances that are in, in, um, in place. Um, making sure that the per, the each department is following the rules of um, if there's any if there's anything that's over 25,000 has the solicitation process been completed the correct way you know working with our attorneys to make sure that our contracts have the correct language in place things that need to go to council make sure that the council agenda packets are um, are in order in place everything that needs to be um, readily available for the council members to read and understand for a purchase that they're approving, all the you know all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed with with that stuff. And then on the fun side, you know, um, having sessions where like March is procurement month. So what I'm going to do for this coming year, since I've started in 23, is I'm going to hold a new vendor uh, business fair for people oh. who business with the city who then can come in and meet the departments kind of understand the roles that they have and some of the projects that are upcoming and things that they're looking for to bring new business into the so that's, that's what I'm working on for March and oh, yeah. then, um, so because we support all of the um, all the departments it's just making sure that we're keeping within our legal rounds of you know spending money you know that the residents give us in the most uh, best way that we can, you know, produce your responsibility. I'm always like making sure that we're not spending money frivolously <laughs> and giving away money and seeing where we can save. You know, there's opportunities that a lot of departments don't know and I don't expect them to know of co cooperative agreements or piggybacking on another city's agreement that they have that we can, you know, tie into and use and in, in building those relationships. So um, those are some of the, the, a lot of the things that I end up uh, working on and, you know, and then because we're a small city and uh, most of us wear multiple hats. There's a lot of commingling of the responsibilities. So the ability to help HR, if they're like, hey, can you sit on a panel for me? Or, you know, accounts payable, hey, can you help me look at some invoicing? So I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> Probably more in small cities because we're smaller, but it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, I, I appreciate the ability to, to, uh, to be able to help in other areas. Okay, so I was taking notes because you touched on a lot of points that I feel like we haven't hit. Um, and, you know, your role as a purchasing manager being basically responsible to the city manager, the, uh, the council, I think we haven't talked much about how, like, how cities operate in that regard. Uh, so can we talk about like, when is an instance that you would have to report something to the, the council, the city council. Definitely. Anything for uh, the way our authorization limits are um, when it comes to approval for items, our city manager has the approval to approve anything zero up to $24,999. Okay. Anything, anything 25,000 and above then must go to the city council to review and they, they have the ability to ask questions. They have the ability to say, no, you know, mm -hmm. go back to the drawing board. You know, we don't like how the bidding process happened. Or, you know, did you guys think about this when you were working on this particular solicitation? What, you know, I think this is missing. So they can ask anything. They can say yes. They, you know, there's the ability for citizens to come and question the, con the, the, the contracts that are coming to be approved. And um, yeah, so anything 25 and above will have to go uh, before them. And even usually um, um, items where it's a multi-year agreement, those have to come back to them for approval because they're over the $25,000 threshold. Got it. Okay, so I'm gonna recap it just because. <laughs> so the purchasing thresholds will determine when you as a purchasing manager have to go and seek approval from the city council. And I think this is a huge point because these people are elected. Yes. Like we are going and actively voting for these people every single cycle, right? right. Um, 
And then the other part of that is you said that these, these opportunities are up for, well, when they're at the council, citizens can go and provide public comments, ask right. questions and things like that. Yes. I mean, I don't know if this is a strategy, right? But it can be, it, it can be very advantageous for you to listen in on these uh, city council meetings because there could be an opportunity for you to get in as a subcontractor or, you know, you can hear about these opportunities um, just in case they have to go back out. They have to be bid again, right? Exactly. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Yes. And then it also gives the opportunity for people who are um, are looking for contracts to, oh, look, this might be a good opportunity. Okay. So this contract is for two years. Let me put a calendar reminder. In two years, they're probably going to be going out again. And this is what they're looking for in their packet when they're doing the process. So I think it can be a, you know, a good little draft uh, opportunity mm -hmm. for people to draft to know exactly what we're looking for when we're going out for you know, for these contracts and services. I, I like that one. Um, next huge point is the new vendor boot camp, I mean, business fair in March of 2023. You will have to send us some information so we can share that out again once it gets closer to the event, for sure. Yes, um, yes. Another clarification, so two points. <laughs> Co-ops and piggybacks. Um, would you mind explaining the piggybacking process to us? Sure, sure. We actually really just, we did one, I want to say last year, because we're sisters to, to the city of Beaumont, right next to us, and we share, um, we're so, the city line is so close, we share a couple of street lights, and they were actually, we, our contract for um, maintaining our street lights was ending, and we found out, our public works director found out that the city of Banning had just did the whole solicitation process for street lights, so it's like, why reinvent the wheel? They they were going to the exact same people that we're getting, you know, pricing from. So we waited. They were going to the board. So we said, okay, well, let's see if, if there's the ability for us to, to use the same pricing mm -hmm. with this, you know, the same vendors that they were going to be using and do a contract of our own. And so we reached out to the city of Beaumont. And the key is they have the language in their contract. If mm -hmm. a the city doesn't have that language in their contract. It's a little bit harder to do it after the fact, but if there's the language that, you know, says that this is an agreement that's piggybackable, uh, then we're then they can go ahead and and, and have, make it happen, and we can use it. So we reached out. Uh, they shared all of their pricing and contract once everything was complete, and then we reached out to the selected vendor and said, "Hey, this is what we're looking for: a certain number of street lights." certain number of repair hours, you know, uh, and, and they shared that then they gave us the exact same pricing that they gave the city of, of, of Beaumont. And we could come up with our own um, term, not more than what the original term was that Beaumont had gone for, but within their contract term. And, um, and, and that saved us time, you know, it saved us time and we were able to um, use a, um, and they also do verification, sorry, I just thought about something else. The fact, the good thing if, if when you're doing feedbacks also is that a lot of the late work is already done, which is verifying the contractor licensing, the Department of Industrial Relations, you know, all of their licenses stuff is done. So that piece, we don't have to spend time trying to figure out. Yeah. That helps in the process to cut out time. So, um, so yeah, we were able to get our own contract with uh, with the city of uh, piggybacking on the city of Beaumont's uh, contract that they had done all of the like work for. Got it. Okay, so that I think that speaks to a that's a huge opportunity for businesses. And one thing that you mentioned that I did not know is that it has to be the language has to be in the contract. That's yeah. the language that I would want to be in my contract. Uh, for this yes. particular purpose. So, <laughs> so that's right. a good one. So, okay. Now we're going to get into the, the specific to the city of banning questions. So <laughs> okay. what is the current process of doing business with the city of banning? There are actually two ways to get in with the city. Most, since I've been here, the way that's been kind of in the past and kind of is, is still going is departments will reach out individually to um, vendors that they know of that they've either done business with or they happen to do a website search and see their information and um, and let them know hey I have this I need this 
widget or whatever, or I have this project, this construction project I'm doing, you know, can I have your contact information? Uh, the other way is um, we just have businesses that contact us that will just, you know, hey, I, you know, how do I get on your list? How do I, you know, become a part of the, the, uh, the bidding process or know when solicitations are, are, are open? And we use um, OpenGov for um, our, um, our advertising and even, you know, putting our bids up online. And um, that's, that's, that's the first step. But that's why I'm trying to, because I really, I'm trying to figure out if there's additional ways that we can kind of get the word out and draw new people in. And I figured this, this business fair, if I can get, you know, good traction and, and good media, you know, coverage or social media coverage, I figure we'll get some additional people in. Because I've noticed that there's a lot of same vendors being used. And I know there has to be more. I, I just want to open our our eyes to, you know, <laughs> out there that can give us some good prices and some good, you know, some good contacts. I know y'all heard that. That means y'all need to market yeah. your business. Like market. She said you're reaching out, getting added to the vendors list. Like that's a huge component. So you will definitely have people reaching out from this episode. I promise. They always reach out. We had yeah. someone from our um who listened to the podcast. They actually reached out and they secured a thirty thousand dollar opportunity. Yeah. So and then told us, and I was like, oh my god! Like it, it, I just do this podcast because you know, I feel like it's necessary information and it's conversational and it's easy for people to like pick up or dissect information that you know they need and use what they need. So again, message: <laughs> make sure you're marketing your business. Okay. <laughs> Um, the next one is how big is the city's budget in terms of being able to provide, like, uh, do business with the, I guess the capacity of business that the city of Banning can do. So our current budget is 105 million and we have about 30,000 residents. And what I don't know um, if people know is we have our own, um, we're a full service city. We have our own electric department. We have our own mm -hmm. water, waste water. So we're a small little city that, that has a lot going on. Our um, our um, electric department, because it's it's more of like an enterprise funds. Um, it as funds go out, they come back in because we're getting paid from residents. Mm -hmm. But part of our budget is uh, spent with our public safety, which includes like the police mm -hmm. and and the fire contracts that we have. We have the, um, the county is um, contracted to do our fire. So it's like, we don't have our own city mm -hmm. um, fire department, but we, um, those are the two areas that, that we tend to spend a lot. I mean, it's important, <laughs> you know, safety. So that's, that's a majority, but yeah, our estimated budget is, is about 105 million. And wow. that's, you know, and, in, in, in we do, we do have grants, we have grant funding, <laughs> we have, um, especially with our public works department, because there's a lot of growth in, um, in the housing market. We have a lot of developers that are coming in. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get on the map with um, trying to get small uh, companies to come in. Like we, there's not like a huge grocery store market here. We're trying to, we just, oh. right. We just recently hired a new econo economic development director and she is working her little tail off trying to get <laughs> like a State of Brothers or a, 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 what is it, Ralph, some kind of grocery store that's, you know, a larger chain. And we don't have a Walmart. We don't have, there's so much we don't have, but we have so much opportunity and growth for wow. large, you know, big, was it the big box stores to come. And, wow. and we're, yeah, we're, we're trying, we're trying. <laughs> you said 30,000 residents, man, oh. a small, that micro city is what you would be considered and you know the terminology of things but wow you was so quickly because we're right in between like because Capazon is, uh, is on the other side of us with you know morongo and the casino and all that stuff and then it's small little banning and then it's beaumont which is huge. <laughs> so it's like we're a small little pass through and people just come uh, right <laughs> that's it the pass through city that's <laughs> it's like don't forget us we're here <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. I like that. And then in terms of doing business with the city of Banning, does uh, the city have any small business uh, 
preference programs or anything? We do. We actually have a, um, a, a small, yes, a small business prep. Well, uh, yeah, well, it's more of a business local. Uh, local preference. Thank you. That's the word. I was like, what's the word I'm looking for? Local <laughs> preference. Yes. <laughs> we don't per se have a small business yet, but I do have that because um, there are some other places I've worked in the past that did have the, not only the local preference, but along with that, there was the small business um, preference as well. So that's not something that um, I don't know that has been done in the past, but it's something that that I definitely have on my little note to, to talk with my manager and the city manager and say, hey, have you guys thought about this? You know, as a, as a point to bring in additional businesses um, versus just the, the local preference. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I will say, we do have um, recently in one of our council meetings, we were one of the cities to receive the, what is it, the ARPA funding, which is the American Rescue Plan funds that were mm -hmm. at the federal level. So we're using some of our funds for the some, for some of the businesses within the city, there's a ten up to a ten thousand dollar grant program that we're wow. getting ready out that should uh, help some of our local uh, businesses if they meet you know the various requirements that are laid out in the packet. That's what our um, economic developer uh, development director is working on. So that should be rolling out within the next month or so. Oh wow! I remember posting about that sometime last year or probably even earlier about the American Rescue Plan Act. So I'm shocked that like the funds are just now being dispersed. They, but that's right. <laughs> right, it did yeah. take a while. <laughs> it took a minute, it took a minute. I kind of feel like it was 2020, no, it was 2021, early 2021 when it came out, you know, but like the website with where all the money was going. Okay. Okay. Well, that is, that is dope. Like that is good for the small businesses, for the businesses that are going to be there. Now, is it only for local city of banning businesses or are the surrounding counties or I mean the surrounding cities in the county uh, able to go after them as well? No, it's just only within the uh, city of banning. Okay. 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 Wow. Um, let's see. Cause that was the last question that we had. And I felt like we kind of went through a lot so far. Um, so, oh, go ahead. I said, this is fun. I'm good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this was going to be so easy. This is going to be easy. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest thing that we really wanted to talk about. You hit some really good points um, when you talked about those co-ops and those piggybacking agreements. I felt like it's something that we haven't hit on enough in this space um but yeah that is really the the segue into another conversation that i feel like we could possibly have um is well oh before we go there i wanted to also highlight why cities and counties in just california doesn't have any minority or women-owned business um programs you know that's a really good question i I don't know. I I don't know. That's a really good, that's a very good question. I I, I don't know if it's the the thought that maybe they're not going to be chosen when it comes to I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I would definitely, like I said, for me, you know, minority businesses are definitely dear to my heart and they can perform and do stuff just as well as any other organization or business. And, you know, I feel like the opportunity to give a smaller business, you know, a minority business, the chance to actually show what they can do is time. You know, they, they've all been passed over for so many things and it's time to, to recognize we can do stuff just as well as the, as the next, uh, next guy. Absolutely. I, I don't know. Absolutely. I, I wonder if you can like get in trouble for it legally. Like I know, I mean, I know you, it's not like mandated to where, I think it's like um, a affirmative action, um, like pro, like something with affirmative action that they have there. So you, you don't give out preference in California, but like if you had one of those programs, would you get in trouble for it? I think that's my biggest question. You know, when I worked at Omnitrans, we had, because a lot of their funding was federal. From DOT. Mm -hmm. 
there was the ability and they had to actually have a certain percentage it's of a minority, yes, that they had mm -hmm. to. And I think for us, our funds aren't governed mm -hmm. you know, as, as they are. So we don't have the requirements, but that I, I definitely mm -hmm. for us, because I think it, it's necessary, it's needed in these times. And I, as long as it's not, you know, there's no conflict of interest, there's not any, you know, collusion or things that are illegal, there shouldn't be a problem. There yeah. Be. Mm. We're gonna read. We're gonna revisit this conversation. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we got to talk to the governor over that. The right. <laughs> uh, but no, definitely, this has been a really great interview. Thank you so much, Nicole. Is there anything more information that you would like to share with our small businesses? Sure. If if anybody would like to reach out, um, please reach out to um, our. Email, the, I'll give you the general email because just in case I can't answer an email, my staff member would be staff members would be able to, to, to answer and reply. Our email is purchasing, all one word, at banningca.gov. Again, that's purchasing at banningca.gov. All right, y'all heard that. Purchasing at banningca.gov. Thank you so much, Nicole. It has been amazing getting this opportunity to learn about you and learn from you. So thank you again for agreeing to come on here. And everyone, that is it. It's a wrap. That's the end of the episode. Uh, so we'll see y'all next week in the next episode um, of doing business with, well, this has been doing business with the city of Banning. So I'll talk to y'all later. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. You know anyone in California, uh, in the area that's near the city of Banny, make sure you go ahead and share this out because we only have a, a few more months before it's time for this uh, business fair, this new vendor business fair at the city of Banny. And we want y'all there, okay? So again, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't. All right, peace. We'll talk to you all next week.